and welcome to PM Express. And probably the apt topic for today should have been the same story again. Same old story. Well, sale of VR retail more plants. Once upon a time, I think we started as a you know fairly socialist country. So most of industries were built and owned by state. And as we are doing our trial and error in terms of governance, you know, sometimes you, you know, go into capitalism and then you go into this, we started divestitures. And so most state-owned uh, companies were being sold off. Some indeed had to be sold off because they've been run down. And year in, year out, government in, government out, you know, an industry or two will be targeted and sold out. And here we are, VRA staff saying that no, not us, you can touch us. Why? Because the government has decided, okay, you keep the hydro part and then the thermal part of the uh, uh, VRA assets will sell them off. The VRA workers are saying, no, you won't. Maybe they are the case because amongst all, you know, Ghanaian owned or Ghanaian run industries, I think they've done fairly well. The security, the maintenance, the dam, still probably working just as new. So they've stood the test of time. They've uh, tried an error. However, there's a lot of political interference instead of more engineering interference. But here we are today. The reality on the ground is that there's no cash. Even though it may be political fault, the truth now is there's no cash. So let's get rid of that so that we can focus on hydro and happy days. But the workers say no. Why? We're here to find out. My name is Nana Asakwal the fourth. Chief of the famous Little Republic, right behind the dam, right behind the dam, <laughs> is Akwamwe Dumasa, and we're here to talk about it. When I come back, I introduce my guests. They'll move. <laughs> Well, it promises to be a very, very interesting discussion. And just as I'm saying that uh, if you've ever been to the Akosombo Dam or if you've seen any picture of it, I'm telling you a few minutes behind it, that's where the famous Republic of uh, Dumasa is. And so, you know what, uh, I am the landlord, technically and traditionally. Uh, I am, uh, you know, a strong stakeholder of uh, VRA. But uh, we are friends too. Folks, with me in the studio is Richmond Roxon, who's a principal research analyst, Institute for Energy Security. Richmond, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then I have Seifas Duse, who is the national chairman, VRE senior staff. Seifas, you're welcome. Thank you. And uh, let me start with you, Seifas. Uh, we can point so many fingers as to things that they did wrong and the things they continue to do very wrong. But probably as we stand now looking at the books, whoever is managing the affairs, you say, look, let me just sever this umbilical cord and save the rest of the body. I mean, why would you say no to that? Yes, yeah, seriously, if you look at VRA's financial statement, you may arrive at the conclusion that says that the books are not good and therefore let's sell the thermal bits off. But that will be trying to misinterpret. May, may we explain to our viewers, you know, when you say thermal bit, somebody may think, you know, it's the dam itself that yeah. you're going to sell. So if you break it down for some of our viewers. Yeah, VRA, we started with hydro and we have uh, invested, diversified into thermal. So hydro is the water power? The, the water power. Mm -hmm. And then the thermal is the one that we have to procure fuel to run. And we have a generator one? Yes, we have some at Abuazi <laughs> uh, in the western region. Mm -hmm. And then we've also expanded because we've come to a stage where we cannot continue to rely on only the hydro, mm -hmm. and so we have to look at other sources, and Tema is the one that is helping all of us. So we have expanded, we have some Tema plants also at what uh, Tema, yes, here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, capacity-wise, which is bigger, your Tema or your hydro? The hydro is bigger than the... the, the, the Tema combined, yes. even combined, all the Tema combined, you have more power in the hydro? Yes, okay. yes, VR, VR, we have more power in there. The, the whole installed capacity in the country, the hydro forms around 28%, that's over 1,180 megawatts. Okay. The VR thermal, including uh, the joint venture we have with Tico, uh, gives you 1,160 
that's about 28 mm -hmm. percent. Then there we have a uh, BUI, which gives around 9 percent. The capacity is 400, so it's about 9 percent of the total installed capacity. Mm -hmm. And then the IPPs together, we have about 1,500 uh, megawatts. That forms about 36 percent of the installed capacity. Total capacity for the country, it's uh, 4,275. And for peak demand, we're looking at just 2,200, uh, which means that we have some excess, some extra, you know, capacity. That's good news. Yes. Yeah, that's good news. So do, do so is a thing of the past. Right? Ah, it's a different than having the installed capacity and also when you are done with thermal, you need cash to be able to procure fuel, spare parts to be able to make sure the plant. Is that not the very reason why? But when it comes to the thermal plant, uh, you have to buy the crude. Mm -hmm. The challenge we have, uh, successful government, they've signed a uh, power purchase agreement with uh, some independent power producers. And for all of them, the state has to provide fuel. And we end up being the one who has to support government in providing the fuel. May, may, may I ask why the state has to? Provide, if, if I have my generator and I'm going to supply you energy, don't you just buy after? Why should I? You buy the petrol for me, for me to supply you the, <laughs> the, the electricity. So what? Then you, do you deduct it for the energy I supply to you, or you pay me and I pay you? What, what's the what's the deal? Uh, you pick a socket, for example. Your plant basically runs on the gas. Mm -hmm. uh, we contract gas from Nigeria because it's cheaper to operate on gas compared to. Uh, uh, light crude oil. Mm -hmm. So we brought gas in. When Asogli came in, we were forced to give the gas to Asogli. The understanding was that we made the gas available to them. Uh, they would generate the power, and then they will pay for the gas that we make available to them. But from experience, they've not been paid. As we speak, we have over $202 million that have been accumulated over two, three years in a period. We, you pick Senate. But they, they are not paying because they say ECG will not ECG pay. ECG is not paying them. And ECG is not paying because? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you go to ECG, you will tell the government it's not paying. And that's how come we can't uh, uh, pay you. So if... If, if, if picking, picking, picking the, the, the point again, you see, these guys are private people. Uh, they will tell you it's supposed to be more efficient than what the public sector. So ideally, they should have also gone out there to look for their own hoard. Fuel, let the fuel cost sit on their balance sheets. Let the cost that are with getting their fuel sit on in their records. Then you can have a good picture of their performance. But as it stands now, Senate, Asogli, Tiko Taka, and Ameri, we have to look for fuel for all these IPPs and it's, there's no way you can survive when you have to support almost all the IPPs within the industry. I'm going to come to Richmond but one last question to you. So if, if they you know, cut off the thermal now, is the deal still going to be in place where you still have to give them fuel or this time they're cutting off thermal and they're cutting off this funny fuel arrangement too? You know what, what, what we are saying is that We've run hydro for over 50 years. We've done this thermal business for over 20 years. We believe we are efficient in running this. We've acquired significant experience in managing the, both hydro and thermal portfolios. And so what is really killing us is the support that we are providing for the IPBs and not getting value for it. So if you want to restructure, I'm sure all of us, we want to be able to be financially viable, profitable. If that is what we want to see, take the IPBs off us. Let them be independent. Now they are all depending on what VRA. Let them look their own, look, go out there to look for their own fuel and pay for it. And then you can have a way of evaluating what VRA's what performance. As it stands now, the bulk of the debt we have on our record is because of the support we are providing for what the IPPs are not getting paid for it. So every time VRA is the one going out there to the banks, going out to the fuel suppliers, looking for and the private guy sits behind waiting for you to bring the fuel for them to hurt to use. And it's not helping VR. We believe that if they take up this responsibility of us, we will be uh, profitable and we'll be. Okay, my, my question again if, assuming you guys said, oh yes, fine, take up the thermal, 
are they going to take up the thermal and take up the fuel agreement or you're going to give the thermal to somebody who you still have to go and supply fuel to? I've posed that question on a radio platform to the Honorable Conrad Doko. We've not gotten any answer to that. Okay. Because I said somewhere that something that we are making so much profit from the hydro, the VRA financial statement that we put out there includes revenue from hydro, revenue from what? Therma. And that is a picture. Right. And so if even we end up as a country selling hot the Therma plant, giving our Therma plant to hot, uh, I, uh, to the IPPs, who will be supplying the fuel? Are we going to hang all that around the hydro dam? If we do that, three, five years' time, we'll come back and declare hydro uh, as a, an entity that is not what, viable and we'll have to give it up. Richard, let me bring you in here. What, what's your take on all this? Um, good evening to your mm -hmm. cherished viewers. Mm -hmm. I think that um, to start with, government hasn't um, been fair to the Which workers. Of, raise your voice a little I think also. government hasn't been fair to um, the workers and stakeholders in general. I think that uh, enough consultation um, hasn't been done by government. Um, over the period, what we've been hearing is that the government will speak through the media. Um, first of all, we heard the president himself um, when he mentioned that they were looking at options of bringing Gridco and Riari, uh, that's private participation. Um, first, he mentioned Ghana Stock Exchange, that they were going to list these companies. Eventually, we heard the finance minister also mention that uh, they were also looking at private participation. Exactly what the government was looking at, uh, the government did not state. Only for us to realize on 23rd of August that the government has announced that uh, it is selling some specified uh, thermal assets of VRE. Uh, we were surprised and uh, we did our checks. Um, the Institute for Energy Security uh, is huge. We have members all across, so we did our checks from our members from VRE. And uh, to our surprise, they didn't even know about it. We you know that even the management had to write to the ministry to find out what exactly the ministry wanted to do. Because if initially you mentioned stock exchange, how come it has changed to uh, bringing, uh, now being a sale, an outright sale? But we questioned the government, we put a proposal out and we asked the government to reconsider. Because the states we were in, we thought that government had played a role in wherever VRA was in at Rich, the moment. Let me hold you there one second and let's hear what government is saying on this and then I'll bring you back in. VRA as a stance needs about $30 million every five weeks or six weeks to buy crude just to power their thermal assets. Looking through the balance sheet and the, the, the headaches that VRA is going through, we followed through the logical sequence of the re recommendations dating back April 1997 to date. And essentially, the restructuring is as follows. Separate, create VRA as a holding company up here and then underneath them have subsidiaries which will separate function as well as balance sheet so you have vra hydro a fully owned ghanaian subsidiary of vra uh, holding we have another subsidiary holding the thermal assets and another service company that would, in, in the interim, hold all the non-core business assets. That is the structure that has gone to cabinet and has been approved by the, the, the cabinet of President Ekufuado. Going forward, what is the implementation plan? To create the separation that, so that all hydro assets, including BUI, will be folded into VRA Hydro with a separate function and a separate balance sheet so that we all can see the profitability or otherwise of hydro generation. Then all thermal assets will be put in a separate subsidiary co-owned by the private sector participating and government. 51% government, 49% private sector, so that there again, we can see the economics and profitability or otherwise of thermal generation. I am forever willing to sit down and discuss 
with VRE senior staff. But this is a conversation that started in 1997 and still dragging on. Whilst the financial viability of VRE keeps going down. Anybody can look at the, 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 the balance sheet of VRE. And it's a sorry sight. It is not the happy company that VRA used to be when it was essentially a hydro company. So we need to take some of these hard decisions, as the cabinet has done, in order to restructure and save VRA and make VRA a healthier company. Well, so that's government side of the year. So right now, that's, that's the reason why they want to sell. Um, yes, as I was saying, um, the government's position has been changing over and over again. Because from what the minister said, what he means is that now they are looking at the stock exchange, they are looking at bringing um, the private sector in. 49%. For 49%. Initially, it was an outright deal. That means government has changed the stance. Like I mentioned, initially, Gridco was also part of the conversation. Gridco has been out for some time. We don't know whether government is going to bring Gridco after it deals with the VRA issues or not. But what we are saying is that over the period, it is the same government's actions that has caused VRE. It is the same government that has um, entered into very expensive power agreements that is causing VRE. It is the same government that um, has entered into agreements with these IPPs that are feeding on the books of VRE. It is the same government that has given VRE a composite pricing, which is at a disadvantage of VRE. When you are giving the IPPs a standard pricing, what you do is that you find an average between thermal and hydro and you give that to VRE. At the end of the day, the basic chronology that I can use is that as a retailer, I pick the goods from you, the wholesaler, and I sell it cheaper than the wholesale person. That is the, what has happened to VRE. So at every material point in time when VRE generates, VRE is losing. What we are proposing is that government, you cannot assess VRE critically in this situation because over the period, you've given them a bad box, they are in debt, they have management issues, even maintenance, you don't give them the resources because they have to run to you for, you, for them to be able to do basic maintenance because they are in financial distress. You are committed to clearing the energy sector levies. One, whilst you are dealing with the energy sector levies, also deal with the IPPs that are on the books of VRE. It is not just about bringing in the private sector, because if you bring in the private sector and you are not dealing with the IPPs that are still sitting on the books of VRE, we will still have the same problem. And that is what we've been saying over and over again. But the positions keep changing. The goalpost is shifting gradually. And we are hoping the government will come to the table so that we'll all look at the issues. Because at the end of the day, VRE is a national, we always, always say it's a national security institution, because it's a strategic when you look at the role that VRE plays. So if you are bringing in the private sector, you, you need to be extra careful considering the impact that it's going to have when it comes to um, our energy sector. So it was uh, 13 million every five weeks. <coughs> That's just not a question that you have to be debating about. You need to say very often, why are you racking up 13 million every five weeks? Like I said earlier on, the 13 million that he mentioned, it's not for only VRS operations. We are supporting about what? How many IPs do we have? We have uh, Sonia Sogli, we have um, Senate, we have Car Power, we have Ameri, we have BXC, and uh, Axa Power. Is it, is it the law? Yes. Is it, I mean, is it law in Ghana that if you're providing uh, you know, energy, VRA has to pay? I wonder how come that, that has always been the argument, and simply put, it doesn't make sense. You know, the IPPs, they are just trying to be very intelligent. They know it's very difficult to procure fuel, and therefore, let somebody do that for us. And all of them, government has so ended up us, uh, signing those bad agreements. But uh, in signing such agreements, I mean, let's say Ameri and yeah. Car Power, I mean, is there nowhere that VRA has to advise or come in or? Or is it just lumped on you? Because you should be able to come in and say, oh, no, oh, oh. That, that's the point I made earlier. That is successive government. That's a challenge. They've always gone in to procure power at exorbitant prices. And they impose it on VRE. That's what they do. You know how America came about? The former president traveled outside because we were in districts, had a the negotiation. Then eventually we had the America agreement. And that's how it happened. 
the inputs of VRE, the technical stuff, what you think, the, the, um, the, the effects on the country was, wasn't done. Because at the end, what government needed to do at the time was that we are in distress, there is doom, so the people are calling on us, so let's deal with it. But if you always take into consideration the technical advice of VRE, it won't be where we are today. And it is the same situation we are having today. Instead of governments listening, government says, no, I'm not even engaging you. You listen to the minister. The minister likened the situation to an employer-employee situation, that government owns it. You, VRE staff, you are the employers. Just hold on, do your work, and let's make the decisions. And I don't think it's fair, because anything that has to do with the state is for everybody, whether they are liabilities or assets, it belongs to everybody. So if a ministry takes such decision, initially it was uh, Honorable Kweku Kwatin who said, this uh, phenomenon of engaging workers before a decision is taken, he doesn't know where it's coming from. I thought that the Ministry of Energy will move from a different angle, but the minister himself makes the same position by likening it to an employer and an employee situation, which I want, I, is I want, terrible. I'm going to take a break, and then when I come back, I find out that, you know, with all these already drawn in the contract, I mean, can we go to a court, Supreme Court, and say, listen, now we can't supply you fuel anymore, you supply your fuel, and how many of them will stay, how many of them will go, and how will that affect power? Don't go. Well, thank you very much for staying. And in all this, why don't we hear from, you know, different perspectives. So we're going on the phone and we're speaking to Adam Mutawakilu, who's a ranking member of Parliament for Mines and Energy Committee. Uh, hello, sir, and welcome. Yeah, good evening, my brother. Good evening, good evening. Well, I have in studio uh, senior staff from VRA, uh, clearly not happy with the you know proposition from government to say that they're going to sell the thermal side of VRA. I know minority in government too are saying that no, we are not too happy about it. But uh, if you agree with me that we have all caused these problems, you know we've signed contracts to say that look VRA, you supply fuel to whoever it is going to supply as energy, whether you supply or not, they have to pay us. And it's just got into a stage where you know they are in debt. Should we not just cut our losses now? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, it's not about who takes well and don't pay. When VRA enter is to, as an optica, it is normally government that asks them to be the optica of the gas or fuel. So it's not like VRA just decide to do that. And the challenges with VRA, we think that fundamentally all those things have been solved or almost solved. And therefore, there was no, there's no need for a complete sale of the asset. If the government is talking about partnership, whereby individual Ghanaians or uh, companies will partner with government in respect to the thermal plants of VRA. We from the minority, or we in the minority, mm -hmm. will support it. What we are against is complete fail, 100% fail to individuals. And why we oppose it is because the mm -hmm. foundation that the country needs to be able to to ensure that these thermal plants are efficient has been laid by the NDC government. The first one is the respect to the installed capacity. We realize that Akosobo uh, Dam, Pong, or Bui, because they depend on hydrology, that is rain, for some time the rain has been be good. And because the installed capacity is not mass, any time these dams run down, then we have to so. So the best, the first step is to ensure that we increase the installed capacity. And as we speak today, we have 4,361.5 megawatts installed capacity. As a government that looks into the future, the NDC government, we also realize that if you have the installed capacity, 
and you don't have the fuel to power this plant, then there will be an issue. You have them, but they cannot generate. So what happened? We constructed the Ghana Gas Company at Atuabo. We ensured that we signed a contract with uh, EMI, and that will be adding about 180 million standard kit, kit of gas to our fuel uh, needs. Ten project is currently adding about 30 million standard kit of gas. Some LNG memorandum of understanding was. Hello, you see, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut in here, but let me cut in. You see, we, we agree on all that. But there, there are two fundamental reasons here. That Number one, all the deals that have been signed by government are producing power which is more expensive than the VRA-owned thermals. That's number one. Number two, all these guys who are coming, Sogle, this, that, that, uh, VRA has to supply them fuel. And you agree they are not paying. ECG is not paying. And that's the who reality. Who is not paying? VRA is not paying because government owes ECG. Therefore, well, ECG don't pay VRA. Well, so that is why VRA is also not able to pay them. Well, that's the reality. That is why we brought, as an NDC government, we brought ESLA. That is the debt. It's a matter of debt. Mm -hmm. We brought this energy security to make sure that the opposition, the NPP then, oppose it and promise that when they come to power, they will scrap it. And we brought it. it was a difficult but hard decision we had to take mm -hmm. to ensure that we settle all the debt and leverage the energy sector, which they oppose. No, but you see, instead of bringing this energy levy, can't you just tell us, Glader, look, you produce me, you provide my electricity, and I pay you. I'm not going to give you fuel for you to provide me electricity. Can't we just say that? But what I'm saying is that who owes a VRA, a ECG VRA? It no. is the same government. We have MDAs that don't, don't, that don't pay. So you don't blame VRA. Government should blame itself. It is not the thermal plants that are not working. It is government that is interfering into the usage of the thermal plant. So you don't blame VRA. Government should blame itself. But, uh, Adam, government I... should settle all the debt that it owes. And then separate the thermal part for a different management to handle the thermal part. Two, ensure that there is profit participation. Why we are saying private participation is that we pride it with Ghana Commercial Bank. The MPT in 2008 nearly sold Ghana Commercial Bank. Fortunately, NTC came to power. And we made the private sector Adam, to Adam, participate. Adam, Adam, this, Today, this they are is using not, it to leverage no, banks. No, no, Adam, they should learn from what we have done. I, I don't want this to be MPP and DC. <laughs> I just want us to look at some of the... Like, one of the questions I was trying to find out is that, can Parliament probably like sit down and say, look, maybe from next year onwards, all IPPs, you go and find your own fuel and supply, we'll buy it. Is, is it possible? Or Let we me just come. Yes. We, we started that, early power. For example, early uh -huh. power that the, uh, the current president signed, uh, cut the sword. They are supposed to provide their own fuel. Okay. Car power uh -huh. are supposed to provide their own fuel. They can look for a fuel supplier to supply. So we are moving no, no, gradually. No. They, can, they, can, they can look for a fuel supply, but who pays? Who pays for the fuel? Yes. It's part of the tariff. When you take the tariff structure, uh -huh. we have the fixed cost and we have the operational cost, operation and maintenance cost. So, so, it so, is car, power, so, so car power fuel is not a burden of VRA? No. It's not. GMPC. It's GMPC. It is not a burden. Okay. Any, power, any power that is currently and being under construction is not a burden of government to provide fuel. Thank you. So, so can, we can, we, can, we move, state, can we move all the others onto that? that scheme because I think it will just free up the yeah. VRA books a bit. Let me tell you. Yes. When the energy sector is settled mm -hmm. and we don't owe anybody, we can now go into those things. And that is the direction we're going. So I don't know. Even the IPPs, are they telling us that the IPPs, VRA still supply for it. That is why we are saying that it is necessary we put our foot on the ground. 
clear up the debt. And that is why Ensela came. And we thought that it is now time to separate the Kemal to be managed by a different management, have a bit of uh, local content in it, like uh, ordinary Ghanaians who will not to sell. But not to sell whole. No, the, the government said they, they're only selling 49%, not whole, 49%. That's what the minister says. If we says. sell 49 and we have 51, we still have control. But they will be disciplined. They will be disciplined. Government cannot go and do whatever they want. But that's, that's what is being proposed now, that we, we let go of 49 and then keep 51. Yeah, we said if government is going that way, uh -huh. we fully support it as minority. Okay. okay. By selling it 100% to individuals, you're not, that you're not we for will that. not support. Uh, thank you very much for that. that. One we will not support. Th thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you. Well, <laughs> uh, say first. Yeah. Uh, I mean, should uh, is it possible? Have you inquired that the current agreement that I let's say so known as ugly, give them uh, you know up to the end of the year and say look from the end of the year you go and buy your own gas we'll pay for the electricity. That is, is something that our staff group we want to push and make sure that. Somewhere on the line, all the IPP that are in this country have to go out there, go and look for their own foil and pay for it. Those things should not sit on VRA hot books. Because we, the, it's cheaper to run thermal plants on gas compared to LCO. Mm -hmm. Now, when we end up giving the gas to them, we have to go out there and go and run our plants on more expensive fuel, increasing our operating maintenance costs and the debt portfolio. So that is something that we want. Uh, all of us to look at. Number two, number two, this off-taker arrangement where IPP generates power and VRA yeah, have, have, to, uh, have to buy and go and sell to ECG or other customers. The Ameritico, the Ameritico pen. For example, he mentioned tariff. When you ask him who pay for the fuel, within the Ameri tariff, the total tariff is what? 14.5 cents plus. The gas at around eight cents. We buy the power from Ameri at fifteen, uh, almost fifteen cents, and we go and sell seventy percent of that power to ECG at five four cents. Uh, five cents. At five yeah. cents, we've signed this agreement, knowing very well that the people of Ghana will not pay fifteen cents for hot uh, power. For power. We've signed. So that. you buy at fifteen, 15 yeah. cents and, sell at, and sell at five cents. To ECG. That's why the, and, why and, the, and, and, the, and the law sits in our, in, in our records. That's but why do you even buy So it? every month That's on the, the Ameri transaction, earlier. we incur a loss of $11.5 million. Right from January. Uh, but is the public aware of this? Because um, this no. is news to me. No. That's, That's why we have. Are you stating this as a fact on record? Facts. We have. The figures are here. That the agreement is that they will produce to us at 15. 50. The tariff is the PRC approved. But you sell it off. We sell 70% of that power to ECG at five cents. You know what we do? VRA thermal power is the cheapest you can get in this country. All the IPPs are selling their thermal power above 50, uh, 54 pesos plus. We sell our thermal plant at 41 pesos. Now, because we even run hydro, the mix, we end up selling to most of Ghanaians at uh, 21 pesos per kilowatt hour. What we are telling ourselves is that let's pick it from somebody who will send the power to us at 21 uh, pesos per kilowatt and give it somebody who will sell it to us at all, 54 uh, pesos per kilowatt hour. That is what we are telling ourselves here. The thing that are killing VRA, let's, we all want to see a viable VRA. Let's the IP go out there to go and look for their fuel. Let's take off the off the car responsibility where some IPP generates power have to sell to what VRA. The distribution companies are there, the mining companies are there, other consumers are there. You generate a power, take it to the market and go and hold, uh, sell it. Don't hang that around VRE. Government is forcing us to supply power to hold VACO at subsidized rate, and government is not paying, VACO is not paying. Every month we build VACO around $2 million, they pay only $1 million. We, the power that, uh, the subsidy side is almost uh, 900 plus. From 2009 up to date, government has paid only $2 million. They are owing over 40, 141 hot million hot dollars. You go and buy so power. So what is it? Are you, is it a charity? Is it a charity organization you want to ask? 
Oxfam. <laughs> <laughs> Oxfam Energy. <laughs> you know, wow. interestingly, you see, like but I said, so we, why, we, why are the unions not? As a country, talking. we are investing. We've discovered, you know, gas. We gas is coming in. It's cheaper to why, why do we want to sell our to thermal say, plant now? Give me a platform. Yes. I want to share yes. a story like this, and I'll give you a platform. You know, a typical very well culture. We are. We, we always keep in. We keep the things to ourselves. But we realize that we've gotten to a stage where if we don't come out to hot speak, we will not be helping this country. We will not be helping VRA. We will not be helping hot ourselves. I have been VRA for about 13 years now. This is the first time as an industry, as a staff group, we've come out to have a press conference. This is the first time we are on TV speaking about the issue. It's a journey. Wow. Yeah. Roxy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what, what question <laughs> do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sad. You know, earlier I, I mentioned that uh, what we have now, it's like a retailer buying from a wholesaler and selling it cheaper than what you buy from your wholesaler. That's exactly... And what he has explained, that the composite pricing that we use has is, is been terrible for VRE. And that it is about time government treats VRE's thermal plants like the way they treat IPPs. Treats them the same. That's why we are asking that if you are bringing in the private sector, what are you doing ideally? Are you going to do that for the private sector after you introduce the private sector in it? Or you are going to continue the same measures that you are doing now? If you are going to be doing it's the same everybody's thing. everybody's just rushing? Because you know, there were so many IPPs. I mean, it's like, I think... It's free money. Like I mentioned earlier, capacity charge. If you're going to bring your plant and by virtue of the fact that you bring it, you're going to be earning $8 million, whether it is used or not. $8 million. How much do you earn in a year? A year, you're looking at $96 million just in one year. Look at five years, how much you earn. It's free money for IPPs. And uh, everyone that has money, everyone that has the resources, easily will want to have uh, this kind of agreement with the government because... At the end of the day, you just sit down, relax, and your money will be coming in. And we are saying that, no, we don't think this is right. Government must take a critical look at it, which government has refused to. Government is not even coming to the table. Government is not even you coming know, we, to we, the we table. We should not make life difficult for ourselves. For every power system, you need some reserve margin. I guess that we have, we are using around 57% of the capacity we have, for example. For all the IPPs, if they are available and you don't utilize them, you have to pay capacity charges. But if VRA is available, not to utilize, nobody pays capacity charges. And so we need VRA to hold some reserve margin for this country. Uh, also, as, aside, I mean, your main suggestion yeah. now is that, look, cuts off the private ones <laughs> and we'll be, we'll be sober. We'll be fine. Uh, anything else? Or that, that's the main problem. I've heard the minister, he wants some structures to be created. I think not bad. He wants to see hydro separate so that we can uh, evaluate the performance of the hydro. He wants to see a separate thermal not selling, se separate thermal uh, as, sub as a strategic business holding unit. Mm -hmm. We want to see that all holding a uh, subsidiary company owned by VR. I'm not sure we have any problem with that. He wants to see a service company or support company. We can all do that, so possibly we'll be able to measure the performance of all this. Any attempt at improving so VRA the performance... The main thing is that you don't want anybody's bad debt on your books. On our books, yes. Okay, now number two. If, if that happens, realistically, how many of these IPPs will survive? Let me give you an example. <laughs> we have an arrangement with... Senate. Senate, mm -hmm. owned by Senate. The arrangement was that we'll buy four, they also buy, because we use the four from the same tank. When four price went above $100 per barrel, they stopped. For about 18 months, we procured for, for them to use. It continued somewhere along the line. From last year, when things, our funds deteriorated, we decided not to buy fuel and pour into the tank again. From February up to date, they've not no, been able to generate it. a single megawatt. That's how That's the reality. Yes, yes, that's the reality. So if, 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 <laughs> if government heeds to your demand, yes. we're going to go back to doom so. Not at all. But who no. will survive? Not at all. Apart from, is it Netka? Who's, yeah. and, uh, is it, and Car Power? Car Power. So who else, who else will survive? No, you <laughs> see, the, the major problem has been because the IPPC government owes them mm. to ECG. So ECG is unable to pay VRA. Mm. ECG is unable to settle the debts. Government does not settle the debts with these. So it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. So to move forward, what government must address is how it's going to pay its debts. All these... 
MMD is that utilize all these institutions, mm -hmm. the, pres um, the presidency hospital, mm -hmm. how government is going to deal with the power they consume. That should be the major aspect because whether you bring um, a, 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 a new entity, whether you bring um, private sector participation, if government continues this attitude of consuming power and not pay, we still have the same challenge. So that is where the problem is. So I ask myself every time, we are bringing in the concessionaire, what is government going to do now? Is government now going to change its attitude uh, with um, what she's been doing with ECG, where it consumes power and doesn't pay, where you have um, UCC alone owing about 16 million Ghana cities and it's not paying, where you have a ratio of Ghana owing huge debts and it's not paying. Is government now going to clear those debts so that those companies can also pay those who, who supply the power or governments will have a new mechanism? Those are the fundamental questions that uh, <laughs> government has refused yeah, to answer. You're starting a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because you know, I'm just listening, and like, <laughs> in reality, many many of these companies will just shut shop yeah. and go away because it was free money, and free they all money. come in, and then suddenly yes, they say, "Look, market the system, yeah, no yeah. more free lunches, <laughs> no more capacity charges. Yeah. They will just have yeah. to take and, the generators." And, 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 and another thing we are expecting from government, I think that government has micromanaged VRA too much yeah. too much yeah. it's been something that successive governments have done give vre kpis if you pick the management team give them kpis key performance in this this is what we expect from you we're expecting abc from you in ne next six months we review it is that what you're doing or not if they are failing fire them that's what you should do hire and fire but if you are going to be there in, in these years of um, vre's challenge where today government is describing vre as inefficient and ineffective hence they deciding to sell it. You have never sacked a single management person at VRA. How do you come back to tell me you are the employer, you haven't done that, but your employee is inefficient? So government should stop micromanaging VRA. Give them the power to um, restructure what they want to do. Then give them KPIs. If they fail, say, no, you failed. We'll kick so you out. My question to you again. Should the minister come tomorrow and say, look, I've thought it through. I'm going to go with your plan. How will this country get energy? You know, we've signed this um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. We've signed on this um, arrangement. Some of them we have to decide whether we still have to continue or we have to find a way of supplying them hot fuel. As it stands, VRA cannot continue to provide the fuel or be off taker for these entities. VRA will collapse. Even if we take away the thermal and hand this responsibility around the neck of hydro, hydro will go down because it's very expensive operating thermal plant. Uh, so many of them, we can't do that. So we have to, we have our own capacity. We are supplying about what? Uh, over 50% of the energy needs of this country. We've done that for so many years. But it will interest you to know when it comes to payment, we provide for, for them. When it comes to even paying, we are the last to be paid. They have to pay the IPPs before we are paid. When it comes to giving tariff, like I've just mentioned, we give them the best of what tariffs. Even if they don't look for fuel, we give them the best of tariffs and we give whatever we think to the state-owned entities. When it Why comes don't we create to fuel? a good platform where all the players who uh, compete well? We are making it, we are favoring what? The, 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 we are making it so comfortable for the IPP to just you know, operate. Why well, we are making it difficult for the state-owned enterprise? And we turn around and say, so, VRA is not what, efficient, no. The contrast is that you buy at 15 percent, 15 cents, <laughs> and you <laughs> sell at five. <laughs> oh, he didn't like add the last one. From when it comes to fuel, yeah. when they get the gas, they also supply the IPPs mm -hmm. first uh, at the expense of their, yeah. and they when will go and procure um, light crude oil or um, distillate crude or heavy fuel oil at a very expensive price. That's what government does today. That's what's happening. But then you use your books to provide fuel for them. <laughs> yes. Wow. You know, some, some are under the impression that we are making so much profit, so much money from what the hydro... But there's a board, so right? Yes. And well, the board was yeah, what? The, the, the board was, no. The, board, the new board was inaugurated today. Just no, no, I mean, this is a, this is, I mean... Yeah, going concern. I don't so. want to politicize yeah. it. I just yeah. want to look at inst institutionalizing yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Over the pre yes, the board has, they've always Thought that, yeah, this is a good deal. Yeah. Let's go with it. Yeah. yeah. The board, on, to, to be frank, <laughs> boards in this country have been political. I mean, we all know, we, we have to admit it, that... The board, for example, today the new board was inaugurated, um, headed by the former CEO of VRA, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kukwawatri, who is now the board chair. And we thought that 
once government has a position and your staff also have a position, as a new board chair, you come in, you deliberate with both of them and you make a decision. The board chair says that I'm coming in to implement the private sector participation. He hasn't spoken to the workers. Wow. He, doesn't know. he has made his decision already, so he's coming in with a prejudiced mind. So if this board comes in and what VRA is saying even makes sense, what the staff are saying, he will not take it. All too soon, that's what time would allow us, but oh, wow, that's the nature. <laughs> that sounds so serious, it sounds funny. But tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, you should have been here earlier, but better late, better late than never. Thank you for watching. As I said, we'll be back tomorrow to do this all over again. Thank you.